everybody. If you're on here, please get those likes up. Get those likes up. Tag anybody on this discussion. Share it with someone that you think may find it interesting. I'm actually really excited about today's conversation. Um, we're going to be talking about how to become a wife, <laughs> how to become a woman, how to become a wife worth marrying. So I'm pretty excited about today. Many of you guys know the relationship and dating market is like just super difficult. I don't know how else to put it. I mean, you got people getting their passports, doing different things um, because they just cannot, they feel like they just can't find good options out here in the States. Um, so I think this is a much needed topic. My goal is to create a platform where, you know, for women who are either newly married, looking to be married, or just interested in what it means to, to, to even be that, they can have a, a, you know, a good resource to hear other women who have, who are actually in the game. I think, unfortunately, I think the relationship sector is very much dominated and ran by single people, which it's okay. Like single people need to have, like everybody needs to have their voice. But I'm like, when it comes to actual marriage, like we should be hearing from people who are actually in the game. Like we should be also listening to our elders or listening to people who have been doing it for a long time and have practical real life advice. Like we shouldn't just be taking advice from people that have millions of follows on Instagram but have been dating for two months. And that's what I feel like happens is you have the blind leading the blind literally when it comes to this kind of different stuff. So that's why I wanted to um, start to have these conversations so we can actually have the tools and have the resources available should we decide we want to go that route? And should we say, hey, you know what? I don't want to do the hot girl summer thing. I don't want to just be hooking up. Like I actually do want to be a wife and find out whether or not you have the qualities or quite frankly, have a solid understanding of what it means to even be or do so. So anyways, you know, that's my heart. Um, we'll see how this goes. This will be the first of a couple of weeks um, doing different topics related to, you know, wife, marriage, all that different stuff. But, um, you know, let me know, let me know what you guys think and if you think this is going to be helpful. But anyways, I am excited about today's uh, special guest, a lovely woman we've connected previously, kind of off and on in chats and, and different uh, platforms. But she has um, a lot to say about this topic. Um, she also has a YouTube channel of her own. So I'm going to bring her on and we're just going to have a fun conversation. Again, guys, if you're here, hit that like button. If you like what this is about, um, be sure to like, subscribe, share, tag with someone, share with any woman that you think may find it um, helpful, especially young women. I definitely want to, in particular, talk to young women who are right at that point where they're getting into the dating market, trying to figure out things. Again, I think it's helpful that they have an alternative resource um, in the event they don't want to have to do the hot girl summer thing. <laughs> because like I said, I, my personal opinion is that it's so overrated. So share that with the young girls. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to bring her on and then we'll get into the conversation. Hello. Hey, how is it going? Good. I'm so sorry. I'm about to turn my camera on right now. It is okay. I know you have a lot going on. There we go. <laughs> so again, thank you for being here and joining me on this conversation. Um, I, I do appreciate it. So I'm pretty excited to hear just what mm -hmm. you have to say, but just before we get started, do you want to introduce yourself to the audience and let people know a little bit about who you are? Yes, my name is Jasmine, and um, I have a channel called Family Values. You can find me there at youtube.com slash family values TV. And we just discuss all things marriage and family. I now and then have my husband come up with me, and we just really are um, advocating for the nuclear family and healing our communities. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So you guys check her out, uh, Family Values TV. Um, yeah, it's definitely some good stuff there. So I want to get, I know we have a lot to cover off and I want to be mindful of time. Um, I want to get into the first question. So how would you describe a wife? Like what are the qualities needed to actually be a good wife? Um, personally, personally, there has to be a level of selflessness and humility that comes with being a wife. Um, I don't believe you can be truly successful in the role unless you have that selflessness and that willing and desire to serve your family and be there for, um, for them. I actually recently had a conversation to, um, with someone who was just asking, what are even the benefits of having a wife? And um, I ended up copy and pasting what I responded because I was like, whoa, that was pretty good. <laughs> so I'm going to just go down the list really quick. Um, 
one, he gets sex on demand. Every man loves that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he has um, a woman to make children with. She cares for and nurtures his children so he has no worries. She helps his health by feeding him well. He lives longer. Statistics show that married men live longer and they are more successful in their careers. She encourages and strokes his ego, reminding him of who he is and the pressure of the world is on his, when the pressure of the world is on his shoulders. She gives him peace to come home to and happy children who admire him. She takes care of the inconveniences in his life so he can focus on purpose and building, which is very important for a man. If they don't have purpose and if they're not building anything, um, they could be very unhappy and take it out on their family. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. She rubs his back and feet and treats him like the king he is. She submits to his authority, allowing him to lead and learn how to lead without her input, input unless asked for it. She trusts him with her life, which as a result makes him more responsible and grounded. Other men and women respect him more by the reflection they see in his wife. Her reverence to him and submission to him makes him more socially respected amongst men especially. Statistically speaking, married men make significantly, uh, significantly more and accomplish more than single men because they are well taken care of at home. But last, but certainly not least, legacy. That's what I beat on people's heads. Legacy is important and legacy is left behind when he leaves this earth. He's remembered and has made an impact on the whole world. Ooh, that was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you, just dropped, you just dropped some um, gems there. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to you for that. So let me, um, let's just circle back a little bit. And shout out first off to, to Kevin C uh, on the super chat. I see family values and shame the building in the house. Big up, y'all. I appreciate you, Kevin C. It's always good to have you here. Also, shout out to Samuel Infamous with the 10. It says, Jazz is good people. Glad to see her making waves. Yes. So mm -hmm. I want to kind of circle back to this idea of submission because, you know, there's so much fear, fear mongering associated with submission. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've come to see or understand submission as, quite frankly, something that is for the woman's safety, something that is for her benefits. Um, but unfortunately, I think right now, a lot of times when people talk about submission, it's it's under this assumption that a man controls you completely and you have no voice, you have no say, you have no personhood, and you're basically like enslaved. Like they're literally like describing it as if like you are enslaved. And so um, how, do you, how have you come to understand submission you know, um, in your marriage, what do you actually find as the benefits of submission, things like that? Well, first and foremost, um, my, my family, we're Christians. So that has allowed me to lean on biblical understanding of submission. Mm -hmm. And I, and I go back to that. I go back to the word and how submission is a form of submission to God. Submitting yeah. to your husband is a is you submitting to God. Not saying that your husband is God, but when you submit to him, it pleases God. That is what we are, you know, created to do and it's for our protection like you said. It's for our protection. God right. knows that we're vulnerable and we're precious and we deserve to be protected. And the only way you could get that protection naturally from a man is from um, submitting and honoring and respecting him. Mm -hmm. It will just come natural for him to want to protect yeah. you and, and, and be that for you. But as far as slavery, it's not <laughs> slavery. It's freedom. It's I know. Freedom. <laughs> like, um, there's so much that modern women carry nowadays we are carrying so much weight that we weren't created to carry and we we we're depressed we're on meds we we have mental issues because we are feel like that we have to be the ones that lead our lives and we weren't created that way we were created to help someone build a family Ooh, and is it, when, I, I hear you cutting out a little bit 
Oh, that's me. Okay. okay. Is it just you? I was about to say, is that me? I don't know if that's just me. I was hearing okay. you cut out a little bit. Do you mind repeating that? You were it was getting good and then <laughs> um what where was I? Um I lost my train of thought. Am I still um cutting out? Because it looks like you're you're fuzzy, but I I'm on my side. Yeah, that, I think that's you, Chess. Can you hear me? Okay, um, let me play with the back and try that again. Okay. Struggle streaming. <laughs> Hello, chat. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's great to see familiar faces. Yeah, Eugene still, she's, um, I think she's reconnecting now to fix it. Mm -hmm. Um, since I'm here, a uh, recent, uh, maybe two or three days ago, I realized that I reached 500 subscribers. So thank you all for your support. And um, I've been celebrating. So I have some projects coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. She's messaging me.
Okay, Chez is fixing it right now. She will be back in a few minutes. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, guys, I don't want to um, lose the viewership. So let's, do you guys have any questions for me I can answer? Um, Eugene st uh, still says, I had a conversation, another channel with a divorcee who does not understand the attributes of a wife you just stated. She thinks men are projects. Yeah, well, I mean, she's a divorcee and has not been remarried. So that says a lot. Um, the sad thing about it is that these older women are, this is what the older women are teaching our younger women that men are the jokes. Men are just projects and we need to fix men. And it's sad because there's just, there's such a emasculation in almost like a war against men. It seems like this happening. And of course it's through feminism, but, um, that's sad. But if you are willing to take advice from a single divorcee, I mean, some people get divorced, but sometimes they just learn from their mistakes and get it right the next time and remarry. But if she's single and a divorcee, be wise not to take advice from her. <laughs> Misery loves company. Um, yes, elegant wife. Feminism is the culprit. Absolutely. Feminism has penetrated all, our, our culture as black people and all co cultures. Honestly, I hear people from overseas saying that, yeah, their, their women are getting the feminism bug as well. <laughs> so it's, it's spreading like a disease. That's why we need um, wives and women that that don't co-sign it to speak about it. We've been so quiet in just allowing the minority to be the loudest. No, it's it's time for us to speak up and and stand up for our boys and our men's and our uh, and our men in uh, the nuclear family. It's very important. I mean, we see right now what's happening to our community without strong leadership in our homes is really, you know, harming us. You see, have y'all seen the new uh, TikTok challenge where the women are listing their body count and showing where they met the, uh, and writing where they met them. And they're trying to make this liberation in um, hoism, <laughs> normal and I think it's just ridiculous especially like when you hear people say oh you're slut shaming her you're slut shaming me and it's like so you agree you're a slut or you agree that she's a slut because the only way to call it slut shaming is to say that that is in fact what she is and I just <laughs> it's just a bunch of hypocrisy going on it's just we gotta speak on it Um, Lynn says, first time catching a live, can you describe your experience with premarital counsel? Thank you. Um, 
I did do premarital counseling, but it wasn't what I expected. It wasn't um, very informative. Uh, I The church I was going to at the time, I don't want to speak too badly about them, but they were not, let's say that feminism infiltrated. So I, I remember talking to the to the um, pastor's wife before, and she tried to explain to me that my husband is supposed to submit to me as well, and that's just not biblical. So it did. My counseling wasn't much of help, so I can't really answer <laughs> your question. Um, Mel says that body count challenge shaking my head. They can't even keep it a secret taboo anymore right it used to be shamed it used to be women women even to to this day women still lie about their body count but they're just trying to make it normal and make it okay and make men accept it and it's just ridiculous <laughs> i see a, a piano can you play the scales mm, no my my husband is the I was about to say my dad. My husband is the musician of the family. Um, speaking of my husband, uh, go check him out at Drisco TV. He's got music up there. He's a music producer, uh, songwriter, rapper, DJ, dad. He's everything. <laughs> go check him out. Um. Hi, love C. Nice to see you. Um, Mel. Oh, what husband submit to wife? No, right? I, it had me so confused. I remember when I brought it home to my husband, was like, yeah, she told me that you're supposed to submit to me too. <laughs> and he was like, okay, no. And he pulled out that Bible <laughs> and he taught me correctly. Like, I'm sorry that she told you that, but that is not accurate. She's not... Um, reading in context. <laughs> Kevin C says, oh wait, elegant wife says Jezebel is in those churches. Speak about it, elegant wife. Good for them in Brad, Chad and Tyrone, but no smart man has interest in marrying promiscuous promiscuous women. Excessively sexual women get placed in the do not marry pile. And women don't understand the trauma that comes along with opening yourself to so many people. It's a it's not just physical. It's a spiritual thing as well. And you're opening up yourself to trauma, to letdowns, to rejection. And you bring that into your next relationship. And pair bonding is an issue. It's harder for you to pair bond. You're comparing. Um, that's why even porn isn't good for you to watch because you you're comparing and it, it could really affect the way that you see your partner. Um, I love your answer. You still don't want you know is right. Exactly. Lynn, I can't, Mel says, I can't even hag with dudes who co-sign on men submitting to wives. They cater into the JJ. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's cringy to to hear a man say that he's supposed to submit to his wife. It is. Um, but considering that, especially in our community, the patriarch, I mean, the patriarch, the matriarch is what rules. And they're being taught this by Big Mama and all of them, their aunties. And even with sometimes even with men in the house, the the woman is the most dominant figures so it's just a backward skewed idea of what um family is supposed to look like okay Charday is almost ready um What's next? The tag and the title isn't working. Would you mind dropping your channel link in the chat? Um, if there's any moderators in here, could you please drop my link? Um, it's at um, youtube.com slash family values TV. If you can please do that for me. 
yeah, love, see, she she was not rightly dividing the scripture. There's so much that backs why the women are the ones to submit. Um. Oh, here we are. Oh God. <laughs> I don't know if I just had like a network outage in my area. Like I, I'm so sorry about that. I've had so many issues with my internet. I just got a new one too, like a month ago. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be got all these good ratings, and here I am getting kicked <laughs> off literally in my show. Like, am I in it? I'm like literally right now using my my hotspot. So hopefully this works. Um, but I'm really sorry about that. I was not trying to have you have your own personal interview for a good 10, 15 minutes, but I'm sure the audience enjoyed it. <laughs> so yeah, they helped me out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So you're going to have to bring me up to speed since I, like I said, was back there trying to get back on my own stream. I, I um, was shopping for a new internet this week. <laughs> oh yeah. We were just talking about feminism and marriage and just bouncing around from um the different con um comments but if we can get back to what um your question was what was the original we were, question we were talking about uh, submission is we landed off with submission is freedom and then that's okay. when i got kicked off my, kicked off my live okay <laughs> <laughs> it's all good but um yeah what i was saying was that you know there's so much freedom in uh submission and not to mention the benefits from it because you are cherished more, you're taken care of. It even helps your looks, like your youthfulness, because you're not carrying so much weight. Like you really can let loose and be like, okay, I don't have to concern myself with everything. I can just focus on the task at hand, my family, making sure my husband is good, making sure my children are good, is good. And it fulfills you and it like, feeds you because that is who we are. I mean, we're, we're nurturers. We're, we're, we're here to take care of our families. And it just really brings out the best in you. And then um, as far as a man controlling, I actually just did a video not too long ago about this. And um, my husband said he's going to get a shirt that says I'm controlling. I think we put such a <laughs> negative connotation on control because how can a man lead without control you know what i'm saying how can i mean you don't have to and, and and it depends on how you see control because a lot of women see control as oh he's gonna slap you around if you don't do what he says and submission is something that you um you give to him it's not something forceful in the first place so for him to say um Jasmine, I don't want you to wear that out. It's a little too revealing. We're revealing. <laughs> revealing. And a lot of women will say that's controlling. Okay, if it is controlling, so what? He's protecting me. If I'm if I tell my children don't walk across the street, the street, I am controlling them, but I'm also protecting them. So I think we give such a bad um, name for uh, contr uh, control. It's okay for a man con to control. He's the leader of the home. He cannot lead anyone without, um, without I wouldn't say dominance, with, without authority. He has to have authority over you in order to be able to lead you. And you are, have to be willing to give him that authority. It's not taken, well, it's given. Yeah, and see, it's it interesting point that you make is you have to be willing. I, I think, again, a lot of the issues that I've heard in, in relation to submission is that, again, going back to the idea that submission is slavery, as if women don't have free will in, right. in that relationship, as if you are just like some, you know, object to be controlled. And what is, again, taken out of that conversation is the fact that like again it is free will when you marry somebody you know under biblical principles when you marry a man you choose that man he chooses you you choose to let him be the head you to your point you honor god by honoring his role in your life it doesn't mean like you worship him it doesn't mean that he's perfect but it's you recognize mm -hmm. that okay, god has a certain order god has a certain hierarchy if i do believe in god or if i am about this then i'm going to respect the creation that God made in this man. I'm going to respect who he is. I'm going to respect his inequalities. And so, yeah, it's like 
whether it's the word control or submission, it's like you are, again, allowing the, the guy, the man to operate in his fullness. You're not getting in the way of that. It's not like he is, you know, putting a gun to your head and saying, we'll do this. Because if honestly, if he has to do that, then it's like there's something toxic to begin with, <laughs> because mm-hmm. really it should be a, a it should all be done based upon love and based upon service. I think also what women forget is that that verse where it talks about because it talks about women, you know, women submit to men, you know, or submit to your husband as he would to the Lord. But there's also the other verse that talks about submitting one to another about mm-hmm. love. And then even the, the other verse that talks about how essentially man has a responsibility to lay down his life. So it's like if man has a responsibility to lay down his life for his wife, if that is the if that is the um the burden that man carries as the head, why wouldn't you respect that? Why wouldn't right. you respect the fact that he has a heavier burden? He has a heavier call under God himself. And as, as a way of recognizing and honoring that, then it's like, okay, the least I could do is try to respect the vision that God is giving him. Or at least I can do is try to respect. Doesn't mean you don't have a voice. Doesn't mean that you don't have a perspective. But, but I love, you know, I love how you break that down into how it's like, yeah, there is an aspect of him that has to have control of the, you know, or agency over certain things because that's his role. Right. Mm-hmm. And then um, when you spoke about having a a voice, usually, especially especially in my experience and when I talk to other women who are embracing submission, your husband will respect you more. He will want to hear from you. He will trust you more with his with decisions and with, you know, how they how he should move forward. So, you know, you earn that. You earned that from him and he will, he's, he's going to come to you anyways. You don't have to force your will. He, you're going to have a voice either way. He wants to make you happy. So he, these huge decisions, he's going to run it by you. He wants to make sure that you're happy, especially Absolutely. when he's getting that from you. Absolutely. Hey, also, okay. So I ran into this issue too. Oh, I think we found it. There's, there's some people asking about your channel. Okay, so that's that's it, right? Family Values TV. I, I ran into the issue too. Like sometimes I could find it, sometimes I couldn't. But guys, definitely check her out. She has some good stuff. Um, a lot of it related to just a nuclear family and and um, just you know how God intended families to look. <laughs> so also shout out to um, Supernatural Spirits with the ninety nine on the super sticker. I appreciate you. Um, what's going on, Demetrius and Hakeem? Good to see y'all members in the chat. Appreciate all of you guys. Also shout out to Samuel. The infamous. I see Ben C. Net outages all over the country. Y'all, if anybody mm-hmm. has any recommendations on like good internet, y'all let me know because I was doing Comcast for a bit and I got to be spotty. Now I'm trying out T Mobile and I'm I'm already try already um a Century Century Link. Century Link. Mm-hmm. I think um how i think it's like more close i I forgot how to explain it i'm not even gonna get into that i don't know what i'm talking about but it's it's been doing as well (laughs) okay okay so i'll I'll look into that and see if they have it i know not everything is out in california too but worth looking into um also shout out to um i don't want to butcher your name but um, I think it's Omo Coyote. I, I hope I didn't butcher that, but I think you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> With the 499 the super sticker. So we need more women like you to teach biblical womanhood and why feminism isn't God's will for women. God bless you. Yeah. No, that's partially what why we're here. Um, or we're gonna continue to have this conversation. I think if nothing else, women are gonna choose what they want, but they should have the alternative. They should hear the alternative for sure. So, um, and then also, Kevin, see, I was going to read this before I got, got kicked out. It says, good husbands don't want to control wives and shouldn't have to. Men want cooperative volunteers, not hostages. We're not going to force cooperation. I think that that is a perfect way to sum up what we just discussed, how it's, are we like willingly choose to work with a man and be cooperative? Because when you understand that a man has a value and you respect his vision and, and you respect him, then a lot of these conversations and a lot of these different things are a lot, are just so much more natural. When you respect a man, you really look up to him. It's easy to submit. It's easy to consider his advice or take his advice in or things like that. Cause it's just like, okay, I, I see who he is, what he's about is something worth reverencing, you know? Absolutely. And I think one issue is that there's women who out there in relationship with men, they don't respect. 
And I never recommend a woman being in a relationship with a man that she cannot respect. Like that's not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not good at all. So, okay, so on to the next question. Um, in your opinion, does every woman have the capacity to be a wife? Um, <laughs> do they have, <laughs> do they have the capacity? Um, well, I think yes, it's in us, but considering society and our culture, if you are dwelled in that, that almost makes it impossible for a lot of modern women um, when you have too many, too, too much influence in your ears, like for me, for instance, cause I didn't come this way. It took for me turning off the TV, stop talking to certain friends and really right, just hone in on my family. You got to kind of shut off the world because the world will demean you, shame you and make you feel stupid for being a, a woman in general <laughs> that's facts that is facts yeah so it's possible i mean i i can't say it's just possible it's in us all we were created for this role it's just how are you gonna go about it are you gonna be willing to cut things off so you can actually focus on being that you hit the nail on the head um and shout out to danica first off in the building good to see you um thank you again for the support but um you you hit the nail on the head i think with so it's like the qualities or the materials are there but it has to be built up you know what i mean like you have to be raised you have to be trained to do a certain thing that you don't just like wake up one day and then all of a sudden you get it like there is a reason there's always there's a reason that almost in every culture even in traditional cultures there was a wife class and there's a concubine class there's a reason for that you know and so um you know i'm a firm believer that especially i think a woman who is who is genuinely is genuine and is genuine about wanting to live out her her essentially who god created her to be um and is willing to learn, even if she was grew up in an environment where she wasn't hearing the right things. Like if she's willing to learn and be humble, as you started off earlier saying, like, be humble, be teachable, you know, really, really, really honoring your connection with God and, and going through that process, then you can be that. Because let's just keep it real. Like most people growing up in the West, most women growing up in the West, we're essentially told the total opposite of what it means to be a wife. All of us go into that indoctr indoctrination. So unless you grew up like in a super script environment or like on a hill somewhere, like you are going to be faced with the uh, the indoctrination of how to not be a wife. <laughs> so like we all have to undo that to a certain extent. And I think if there's that desire there and that willingness and that hunger, you know, and that ability to change and really look into the mirror, then it's like, yeah, you can do it. Um, but I, we got to get out of the idea that like you can be a feel for and then just get tired and bills are due and like okay i'm gonna just put myself out there on tiktok okay i'm ready to submit now i'm gonna cook you some food i'm gonna make the bed once you know uh i'm gonna look cute and now i'm wife material and it's like nah like do you not understand there's a whole process that goes into that <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yes, and, then and then there's this um idea that oh when i find the man that i'm willing to submit to then i'll be submissive mm -hmm. and it's like it, it doesn't click i mean yes it makes it easier I, I do agree with that. It makes it easier, mm -hmm. but it does not click so easy because as soon as you, he does something, you, you're you really tested on your submission when he does something that you believe is wrong and you don't want it to happen. That is when you are really tested. How are you going to do? How are you going to deal with that? How, how are you going to bring it mm -hmm. to him? How are you going to uh, contend with that? Are, are you going to contend in, how, in, in what way? So a lot of women think that they're submissive because they're dealing with um, agreeable men. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And also, you know, submission isn't necessarily just being quiet because there is a time and there is a place to be quiet and there be about, you know, there's a time to use our words and not use our words. Like that's important. Mm -hmm. But you can be a woman that doesn't even speak a lot or tends to suffer her emotions and still be rebellious inwardly. 
So I think too, people who like, if if you have a really shallow understanding of submission or cooperation, like if you just have a shallow understanding of it, you can find yourself still undermining your husband or still undermining the man in your life and not even knowing it because of your energy, because of the way that you treat him, some of those little microaggressions, like men pick up on that stuff. Even if you don't say it, they pick up on it. Mm-hmm. So uh, the, the neck rolls, the eye rolls. Oh, yeah. the, yes. The, <sighs> the huffing, it's like, the huffing. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yes. whatever yes yeah and that's something that i have I, I i still now and then catch myself like oops i did not mean to just roll my eyes i did uh, you know <laughs> it, it happens because it's such a habit that's why you can't just snap and be this wife that you think you're gonna be it takes time it takes effort especially if you were not raised to be that right you know and you hit the nail on the head earlier when you said that you, you know, you grew up, the, or I don't know if you grew up in the church, but at least your family now is, you know, Christ follower, serving God. And you basically, you know, you, uh, you know, use biblical principles. And a really big aspect of that is your devotion to God is directly related to how you treat your spouse. So it's like for women going out there talking about they're spiritual, they're serving God, they're Christ follower, whatever, whatever. It's like the truest way you can measure that is first your family. How are you? How are you treating your husband behind closed doors? Everybody can get online and look cute on Instagram or TikTok. Everybody can do that, but like behind closed doors and nobody's watching you and nobody's seeing you, how are you respecting and honoring that man? And I think that is the first and the biggest test of spirituality. And if you aren't, if you're being rebellious to God, you ain't gonna be. You ain't gonna. You ain't going to be respectful to your husband. Like they're, they're completely connected. You know right. I mean? Exactly. Because what goes on in, even in, 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 on the inside, if you are doing things angrily and you're just going about the motions just because it's duty, um, it, it ends up coming out eventually what's on in the heart. You end up speaking it and then you end up being, yep. it. Yeah. so it's like, um, don't, when you have those moments where you're angry or you just, don't want to have to do something um a lot of times you have to check yourself you have to check your heart and be like okay lord whatever this is whatever this bitterness is can you fix that because i know it's not right and i know it's not supposed to be there you check it even when it's in your heart even though you didn't do anything physically wrong or, or or say anything wrong when you when you check that in your heart first it you know it makes your actions more um genuine and real yeah but no, but as far as um giving honor to god like when when i got it sometimes because my husband works n- night shift and mm-hmm. um he come home late and he's hungry and then I, you know i'm pregnant so i'm like <sighs> i'm tired but <laughs> i would get up and fix him something to eat and sometimes I don't want to have to do that because I'm tired. But then I think about the fact, you know what? The, what I'm doing isn't, yeah, it's for him, but it's unto the Lord. What I'm doing is pleasing my my father in heaven. And it's a form of worship for me. You know, if I'm doing additions, don't feel like it. I make it a, okay, this is what I'm doing for God because this pleases God. And when you change your mindset, to think in that way if you believe in god of course when you change your mindset to think like that those daily duties don't feel like a job anymore it feels like a an honor yeah no that's that's a beautiful way to look at it perspective is it's the perspective truly is everything um real quick i want to honor some of the the super chats also shout out to samuel the infamous for the five i see No one is just humble. Humility, like love, is a choice. Um, thanks again. Yeah, I know that. I, I, I do I do agree that you have to choose. You do have to choose to go um, certain paths. Again, shout out to uh, Life Light with the 1999. Just showing support. Thank you, Life Light. I appreciate it. And again, Danique, I don't know if I read it. Um, it says, stopping through. You ladies look beautiful. Again, thank you, Danika. It's always good to have you here. Um, she's holding down the pick me sphere for sure. Love her content. Um, so yeah, no, so you have some, um, you hit some, man, the nail on the head there. You guys definitely be sure to support her channel. If you guys want to get some more information related to just, you know, family life, 
um, what it means to be a wife, all of that. Her channel is all about that. So please show some support, show some love there. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next because you are cooking. So you kind of, I feel like you touched upon this a little bit, but what would you say is the role or the primary role of a wife? Sorry, I was muted. So the oh, primary okay. the primary role um, is to be a help me is to okay. is to help your husband in his purpose and endeavors. That is what I what I know to be the purpose of a wife is to, um, you know, whatever it is that he needs. Maybe it's his personal assistant. Maybe mm -hmm. it's just just to be a pretty face and smile when he gets home and good food. Like it, it depends on it, uh, what exactly that is, um, depending on the man that you married. So mm -hmm. figure that out, get to know him and his needs. Yeah. And, yes. yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. be that. <laughs> and again, and then, going back to the point, oh, sorry, you know, you finished first. And then um, the second most important um, is children. Even if you are, you cannot have children, that doesn't mean that you can't be a mother and um, nurture maybe uh, nephews or adopt in the future or anything like that. But men um, really, they care about their legacy. They want to see uh, their sons and really uh, raise them up to be the men and women that you would want to see you would want you wish that you could be you want them to be better than you so you know just that's a very important role as well um, mothering his children mm. now that makes so much sense um definitely good good stuff and to your point you know help me and i know i, I can hear i can hear all the all the that's misogynist the abc x y and z right now but i mean i'm like look it especially a woman who, who who say they ascribe to the church or they ascribe to being a believer, then it's like, scripture's pretty clear. You can't really get around what, what's said in the scripture. So if it says you're help me, it says you help me, you know? Yeah. And that's why what you said earlier is so important. Like when you respect the man you're with, then it's a lot more natural. It, it doesn't, this doesn't become so difficult. It doesn't become like, you know, you're trying to force a person to do it. Like when you respect and truly admire the man or you admire the vision or what he's about what he's doing then it's a pretty natural thing and again i think a lot of these issues that women have come from a couple of things some of it is just a lack of awareness maybe not maybe growing up in an environment where they saw they saw abuse and so they think submission is me putting myself in abuse or they grew up in a single parent household and they didn't see the interaction between men and women in a healthy way. And so they mm -hmm. are just unaware and they're afraid of that, you know? Um, and you, so you have all these, I think, women who are coming with their own ideas of what it is. And then they get in a relationship with a man that they do not do not respect or they want to compete with him. And they, they want to feel like they have the upper hand in career or the upper hand in whatever, like that there's this need to compete. And again, you can't, if you're competing with your man, then you can't respect him. Like, you, you, it can't be both. And we mm -mm. can't cry about wanting protection and cry about being the least protected as black women. And then at the same time, not want to respect and honor and take it into advice or consideration what men think. So it's like, you really, really do want to make sure that even, even when you're dating a guy, like if you can't respect him, if you can't respect who he's about, if you think you're going to try to change him, it's like, sis is probably not for you because that is really important in a relationship for it to function well absolutely but but you see a lot of these women who don't want to have to submit they purposely choose men like i said earlier that are agreeable and who aren't taking the charge men that they wouldn't respect and will most likely want to cheat on him with the more dominant man and it is just silly it's is really silly but they do that because it's they feel it's easier and they could stay in control that control but yeah that that in of itself he's the nail in the head there with that control piece um shout out to Stefan with the 10 i see who is that okay so we have married ladies on the panel <laughs> so but i do appreciate your support <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm gonna keep this along because I I want to be mindful of your time here. Um, but again, thank you. I mean, you were sharing some. You were dropping some gems. I know this is definitely going against the sisterhood and what we've all heard. But like I said, we've all heard enough of the sisterhood. So it's about time that we put some other options out there. At least if women want alternative methods, you know, to how they run their life. Um, Absolutely. I'm tired of the the um the 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 rhetoric over and over and then our men they're just getting tired of us and we're just like we're not all like that i'm sorry we're we're gonna be we're gonna be more proactive with this because th th a lot of men exactly. nowadays feel like that we're all the same and we're all like that and it's like no we're, we're trying to do better i'm sorry <laughs> well you know i always say this too it's like the hit dog hollers a lot it's right like women that I know who are actually happily doing their, you know, living their lives, raising kids, whatever. They don't have the time to be on, on social media like this. Like they don't have the time unless this is like their job. Like you're a content creator. Like they're busy. They're busy raising their kids. They're busy, you know, in and out changing diapers. So it's like, I think partially the reason women who maybe live this way or believe this way or, or, or model this way are not so up, out in the front lines is because they're actually busy doing stuff. Like I said, unless you're like a content creator, like you and I, and maybe that's something you do for fun or as a way to bring in income or whatever it may be, um, you are actually living your life. So I think that's one partial reason. It's like, you don't see it so much because those kinds of women are, have their hands full, um, serving their husbands, um, you know, raising their families. Like that's a full-time job really. Exactly. So, so I appreciate you being here and, you know, taking the time that you can to drop some gin, some jewels, because it's very much needed for sure. Yeah. Uh, our, our, our okay. So let me move on to the next time. question. So how would you. Uh oh, no. You see oh. me? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay. <laughs> I'm definitely going to check out Century. Also, you guys in the building, if you guys know of any good internet, y'all let me know because I was sharing earlier. I've been like, I've been trying all these different internets, been struggling. Like I did Comcast mm -hmm. or Xfinity. That was not working for me. Now I'm T-Mobile and the struggle is real. So if any of you guys have recommendations, I'm open to it. Let me know. Um, okay. But let me see. Um, okay. So next question how would you say that a woman would prepare herself to become a wife? Like, what are the steps necessary to get to that point? If you're like, you know what, I want to do stuff differently, or I do want to be a wife. What would that look like? Um, I wish that I did prepare myself. I learned through my marriage, but from learning through okay. my marriage, um, I would definitely suggest surrounding yourself with submissive women, um, wives, um, make sure that you're on one accord and that you want what they, what they have not saying you want their man, but don't, don't look at their man. And then he's just this big feminine man. And then you wonder why you're, you're attracting feminine men because you're hanging around getting advice from her. <laughs> so make sure you, you know, you size up who these people are before you surround yourself with them. Use wisdom. Um, also, I think especially now YouTube's um, rest in peace, Kevin Samuels, due to him starting this conversation, I think YouTube is a good place as well. You could um, follow people like me. You can follow people like Chez, like um, Chantel Simone. She's awesome. Um, there's a lot of women now that are really speaking about this and in, in, in giving classes. There's classes that you could take. Um one thing that I think is important, um, especially for women in the black community, because we are deemed as very masculine and it's due to the way that we've been raised. But um, in order to tap into your femininity, I think it's good to um, dance, go do some belly dancing, do um, things like that to, to really bring out your sensuality so you can feel comfortable in your femininity. But as far as being an actual wife, I think um, it's important to, if you're a believer, read about biblical wives. Um, also, 
really like write down a list of the things that you believe that you have an issue with with yourself like when it comes to humility when it comes to um serving are are you very selfish are you self-seeking and all of those things are you envious of other people and try to get that out of yourself try to get that you know uh, purge those things to get counseling if you need to and um really try to cleanse yourself to be um new and be okay with losing part of yourself because when you be, when you come into a marriage you become one and a lot of times we hear about this individuality in this don't lose yourself um mantra and i think it could it could become dangerous because a lot of women are even divorcing because they feel like they've lost themselves when this is is normal it's normal it's supposed to happen in a form I'm, I'm not saying just completely like if you don't like hot sauce you don't have to eat hot sauce but the you will change and when you meet the man of your life he's going to add to you he's going to maybe um change the way that you think and give you wisdom and be okay with that be um what would you call it teachable be okay being teachable and seeing things yeah. differently. No, those are all all good recommendations. I I especially I think I mean step number 1 is for sure check your surroundings. Like if you're a single woman and you want to be married and all your other friends are single, like they're not going to they're not going to be able to give you any advice on how to get there because you guys are all at the same place. So it's like you definitely want to get yourself around healthy married couples who are doing it have been doing it for some time and it could offer you wisdom that's you know when i was single that's what i did like majority of my friends to this day are married with multiple kids some of them you know grandkids at this point and i was just around them hanging around them sometimes going to their houses um there may be times when you feel you may can feel a little bit like um left out you know, if, if you're making that transition from all your friends that are singles to now you're hanging around more married people and you're like, crap, like I don't have a plus one, but I think it can be good because you can glean and you can start to recognize, okay, what does this actually look like in reality? Because also you got a lot of women out there, single women out there giving each other advice. And sometimes even if a single woman does get married and she's not surrounded by other people who have been married before and she's getting into it by herself, then she can have unrealistic expectations or she can be surprised or she can be um, disillusioned when marriage isn't what she thinks it is. So that's why I think it is really important to be around people who are doing it well. Um, to your point, church ministries, I mean, a lot of them do have marriage seminars or bible studies or just different things you should you know there's elders like there are resources out there if you really want to do it and i i especially encourage a woman to check her relationship with god first and foremost because to your point if you have to be submitting to god first before you could ever submit to human you know and if you're rebellious and you don't like to take orders from nobody you want to do you you can do battle by yourself then you bring that energy into a marriage and it can be just like constant chaos so all really really good practical i think um recommendations books also you know, like <laughs> was was very uh, i forgot something was also very important is if you don't know how to cook learn how to cook and mm -hmm. um write a recipe list of at least seven dishes that will be good um so you can just yeah, have that's that a, that's to, to help you i had start a little book with just seven start with seven and just learn how to how to master that those meals and your your husband future husband will definitely appreciate that bonus tip too if your future husband like his mom's actively in his life and she can cook go go around her pick up those recipes have her show you some recipes practice her stuff at home like it, it's not even that stuff is you know even if you don't know you can learn i've been going back and forth as a brother and i want to like do that have that as a section on my channel because i love cooking i love being in the kitchen and i've yet to meet a man that doesn't appreciate that exactly but it, you brought up go to his um his mom <laughs> Sadly, not not all the mother in laws are are you know, willing to share the secrets. Uh oh, 
think you froze up again, Chaz. Hope it corrects itself. Thanks, Hakeem. There's two of you. There's trouble somewhere right now. Um, I know my internet. That's what I said, y'all. I like I have a new internet, and evidently it's not doing what I want it to do. And I'm like I'm shopping around. So mm -hmm. I'm taking. You told me CenturyLink. If any of you guys else have recommendations, because it is the struggle is so real out here. But I'm sorry. Thank you guys for bearing with me. Like the struggle stream is extra today. Like this is the first time it started acting up. Like it was cool all month. I had no issues, and literally as soon as I start the series, it decides to like. Does not work. Yeah. So annoying. <laughs> you, you gotta pray. You gotta pray over this. Uh, these I streams. do. I'm this kind of spiritual <laughs> warfare or something at this yes. point. You drop us some gems, and I'm like, no, we want to get all of this. Um. Anyways, yeah. So I would just, I was going back and forth about whether or not that would be a good, maybe a good resource, especially for new moms or women wanted to know, like having a time where we're sharing recipes and talking about different ways to improve our cooking skills, because that's very important, especially when you start having kids. Mm -hmm. um, um, number, uh, before we answer well we can answer his question first since he he jumped oh, okay i see paying for more of fv time give details on how why a wife learning belly dancing and art forms of her husband and how it helps him in the end when she learns dancing and couples dancing please Okay, well, I wasn't more so talking about couples dancing, but that is also beneficial as well if he wants to join in because that's, you know, fun time that you can, you guys can have a fun date. But it's more so to help you just stay more sensual and attractive attractive to your husband, even in your movements, because men look, they, even though they may not consciously know, but they look at those things, the way that we move and how we sit and things of that nature, it, it, you know, it helps a man stay attracted to you and men are very visual. So I think that, you know, is very helpful to, for, for your husband in that yeah. degree. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You know what? I've said, for example, like, I don't have any issues with twerking. I'm like, could you just do that at home, please? You're right, like, right. <laughs> we don't all need to see that. But I'm like, yeah. yeah, that could have, knowing how to do that can have its benefits within context. I just think the issue is something that I think should be sacred or it should be between you and your, you know what I mean, is now for everybody to see, even when we don't want to see it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, take that energy and focus it to, <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Not to everybody that walks past you that you think is attractive. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, um, yeah, so do you I'm mind if I add, uh, answer Stefan Moultrie's question? No, no, no. Is it, oh, this one right here? Yeah. Okay. Shout out to Stefan Moultrie too for the five. I appreciate it. Okay. I didn't even see that. Okay, cool. Uh, you want to go first, Chess? Oh, okay. So, would you go 50 50 on the bills if you had to? Um, that's a great question. I think. Ultimately, within the within the family structure, like if it if it comes down to what it has to happen, um, like let's say God forbid something happens, you know, the husband gets sick or something like that, and he can't work as much, and you have to take on a role. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I personally, right now, um, with this whole modern context where men and women are coming and doing 50-50, I don't personally see anything wrong with that. Now, I would say for me, my preference is that I was always like, okay, if I'm going to be with a man, if I'm going to be marrying a man, like he's ahead, right? And a part of that means that like he's heading all those different things. So um, I don't see anything wrong with men and women sharing um, financial responsibilities, if that makes sense. I see nothing wrong with it. I just think for me, it's my personal preference is that uh, I just prefer to be in submission and let my, my husband like kind of manage that. And mm -hmm. then, um, you know, if he's like, hey, could you bring in more or stuff like that? Then I will certainly do it. Right. So I hope that answers the question. But 
I agree with you. If my husband is asking me to do that, I mean, I'm submissive, right? I have to do what he's asking me to do, um, especially if it's a need. And um, honestly, I I wouldn't I wouldn't say that would be something that I would want, but it depends on how. Like, if I blow up on YouTube and am making buku money or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll pay all the bills. Shoot, it doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> That's you know, right. my money is yours and yours is mine. So um, it's not more so um, about paying bills. It's more so about having to leave my children, having to depend on other people to raise them. That is the only time that there will be um, concerns that I would yeah. bring up to him. That's facts. That's facts. Yeah. And honestly, it gets to a certain point where like you you spend so much money on childcare, it don't even make sense for you to to, to work. You exactly. I mean? So I actually went like in the beginning of our marriage, I was not a good housekeeper. I was not a good housewife. And I just felt like I sucked at it. And I didn't feel like I was of value. And I just was like, I just want to get a job. That's the only way that I felt like I could be of value. <laughs> and he was like, fine, whatever, do what you do. And I did and regretted it because my kids, they were, you, you could tell the difference. They, you know, they missed me. And then my, my house definitely suffered even more. And then I didn't feel like cooking when I got home and we were eating out all the time. And then the, um, the money for daycare and all of that, it just was stupid. It was stupid. Yeah. Was like, you know what? I learned my lesson because my yeah. husband brought it up to me again. It was like, this is kind of not productive and i was like you're right because i don't even want to do this no more <laughs> i think too the issue is that sometimes if we look at men as just wallets then a woman will get into a scenario and be like well then what's the point of marrying a man if i have to split all the bills or if i have to carry that load and so a woman will have that someone will have that perspective not understanding that like when a man and woman comes together, it's not just like you're splitting the bills or things like that. Like there's a certain order and discipline that men have. Um, there's protection. Like there's all these different aspects of about who a man is in your life that are not just monetary, if that makes sense. And I think right now, because relationships have become so transactional, um, we look at all of this as just like, oh, well, if he can't pay everything or he can't give me a luxurious lifestyle, then it's not worth it. Not understanding that. It's like, no, men have other inherent qualities that are incredibly important, especially if you think about wanting to raise kids or raise a family. You mm -hmm. don't want to do that by yourself. So um, most people right now have, you know, are, are doing something like, you know, even stay at home wives, they may have a side hustle, they may have different things, partially, partially maybe because they want to bring in money or partially because that's just something they do for fun. But I think we have to get out of the mindset of like, relationships are so transactional and unless he can fit the bill completely then i'm just better off by myself because it's like no you're missing the other components of really the beauty of when you're working together with a man and the way that he sees things differently the way that he can i think i mean i think men are are, are better naturally made to like weather the store where the things like inflation where the things like because they're built for war and so um they can provide vision, they can, they can provide perspective, or they can provide, I think, a sense of, uh, of logic in those scenarios where we might be in our feelings, or we might be anxious or just not knowing what to do. So it's like, I mean, there's so much more to than just a pocketbook, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, even physically, like you said, they're built for war. You even think about the fact that when men age, they tend to look better, right? That's Women true. age, not <laughs> so much. So we got to protect that. We got to keep, keep that keep that together. And it's okay when your husband ages a little bit. It's okay when he, you know, he gets those those grays here and there. <laughs> now that's no, that's true. There are some men who look better. Like a lot of them actually look better as they age. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just black men. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's just. Confidence, <laughs> if it's the grays making them look more mature, more established, I don't know what you're right about that. Yeah, um, okay, so I want to be mindful of your time. How are you doing on time? I know I have a few technical issues I was not expecting, but um, I'm fine if you wanted to add an extra 30 minutes that it took for okay. us to okay, yeah. I appreciate it. 
<laughs> okay, so now I want to segue a little bit into um, essentially, you know, looking for a husband because I think a part of being a wife or marrying is also recognizing the kinds of qualities that you would want in a man that you would settle down with. Um, so let me see. I would, so my question would be, how do you think a wife should or can recognize her husband or recognize a man that has husband qualities? Um, well, the number one thing for me is being a problem solver. Does he solve problems? Is he solution based? Is, is that his mindset? Because it's all about mindset. Like you said, money isn't always the number one. Can he create a plan and do it and finish it? Though things like that are what's important um, when it comes to a leader in general. Is he able to um, uh, give directions without, how can I say, it? without being mean about it too? Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> can, can he talk to you? And and understand that you're a woman and mm -hmm. you're feel you be in your feelings. Is he understanding of those type of things, stuff like that? Um, but most importantly, um, like I said, is he a problem sol solver and wisdom? That is what attracted me to my husband. Um, I would talk for hours on the phone with him, and he would I would bring up a problem. And he's like well, why don't you just do this and this? And I'm like, oh my God, you're right. And then it, it's like, it's clicking. This is what I've been missing all my life. I'm I'm taking the long way and you got a shortcut. I love that. I love that you can make my life easier. And I think that's important for a woman, especially a woman who wants children, who wants to really build a family, to really look at that. And um, is he capable of expressing himself you know what i'm saying it it, it does he seem standoffish he doesn't want to really express um his feelings i mean and i'm not saying be all super crybaby all the time but can he um be confident and not afraid to speak what he thinks that's important too you want someone who who is not afraid to speak his mind because men that are timid about speaking his mind isn't probably going to be able to protect you adequately uh-oh not again oh here we go okay go like i said this is the first time okay it's like it's so annoying i wish there's something i could do but like i said i'm gonna be looking for another internet <laughs> um girl i lost my train of thought Oh no! We were talking about how, um, yeah, no problem. Uh, problem solving is a big is a big one for sure. Mm -hmm. What would you say about like uh, as far as compatibility or spiritual compatibility? Um, you know, you know, you're a Christian woman. Your husband's walk with God. Like, how did that influence things? His mm -hmm. financial state. Like, did any of those things come into play as you were looking for a husband? Um. At, during the time, I actually wasn't looking for a husband. He found okay. me, okay. and it just happened yeah. to be perfect. Um, we both grew up as Christians, so it absolutely is very important that you are equally yoked. You, um, If you're a Christian and the man that you're attracted to is, what I don't know, um, Hindu or uh, Buddhist or muslim or something like that you know what i'm saying there's going to be conflicts especially in marriage and once you start having kids who, who's going to do what are our kids going to be christian is are they going to be this or be that it can really create problems so definitely be equally yoked in that um in that sector i'm, I'm glad you brought that up um oh. what else did you say no i just was asking is you know the different uh components um if you were like financial stability, um, mm -hmm. whether or not he has relationships with other people, like were, were any of those things mm -hmm. components that you were looking for? But you mentioned that you actually weren't looking for a husband at the time, <laughs> actively on the market. <laughs> yeah. And what, what the ultimate thing that, um, that attracted me was his wisdom. And then it just, 
it felt like it was us against the world. It was just me and him in a bubble. And I just, you know, I felt protected on a deeper level because I didn't have my father around. So that's why I always say I felt like my husband um, fathered me. I was 22 when he met me. I was very immature. <laughs> And okay. he just, you know, he gave me game on a lot of stuff and really talked to me because I was very naive and um, he taught me a lot. I mean, I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for him. So um, I think just being able to look up, like you were saying earlier, to really look up to, to that man. If you can't look up to him and see him as value to your life, you, you probably shouldn't consider marriage with him because there will problems will, will arise. He needs to be adding to you to make you feel like you're um, you're winning. He's the prize and you're getting something. You're gaining something out of that. As far as um, he was in the military at the time. Okay. So okay. that alone was because um, all my family, uncles, grandfather, my mom, they were all they're all military. So that alone made me respect him as well. OK. And, and and I knew that that means there's stability there. So long as they there's stability there, I didn't put a I don't think we should put a number on it. But if there's stability there, I think you it, you know you should consider him. Yeah, I I I agree. I know for me when I was actively looking, um, I mean spiritual compatibility is is like foundational because it's like you know to your point if you're I don't know, Christian and the person is atheist. It's like, it's probably not going to work. <laughs> like I just, you know, um, there's some core principles or some core foundations that could clash. So certainly spiritual compatibility, I think is really foundational. Now it doesn't mean you're going to see everything the same way because me, even me and my husband, you know, we may identify a certain way, but it's like when it comes to even looking at certain scriptures or understanding certain scripture things about God, it's like, yeah, there's going to be differences in that just because men and women are different. So you're not always going to understand everything the same way, but I think having a basic understanding of like, okay, well, this is ultimately who we, you know, who we serve, who we believe in is, at least for me, that was like number one. And then, you know, as you mentioned, you really all, everything that you said came back to respect. You respected your husband because he was wise. You respected him because he had, a history in the military or he had shown that he was, you know, able to kind of stick to something and, you know, work hard. So it's like everything for you really came back to having this deep respect for your husband. And those were the qualities that you're like, yeah, I could see myself being with that man long-term. Mm -hmm, um, absolutely. Yeah. It was, it was like when the way that I, that I describe it, I was willing to put on a blindfold and just do and go anywhere that he, I mean, he, tr he, he took me places. I went to New York for the first time. He took me like, I, I wasn't afraid. I felt so secure in his presence. So I would, I would follow him blindly is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so I think that is important. If you, if you want to um, really be a submissive wife, are you, would you be willing to, follow him blindly and when you say when you say follow him blindly help me understand what do you what do you mean exactly i mean trust that where he is taking you isn't going to be to a place that will harm you you know what i'm oh. saying he, he, his intentions are well and you you know you get to figure that out through time and the way that he does protect you and the way that he like the way that he said he would explain things to me well maybe you shouldn't do this because this this and this or maybe you shouldn't go that way because there's no street lights on that side or things like that you, you recognize okay he actually cares about my well-being and because of that i i feel secure and i am willing to walk with you with the blindfold on and know that i'm gonna be protected and good in your hands Okay, I, I know that my life is well in your hands. Mm -hmm. And when you say so, when you say blindfold, you're saying like he was taking you, or introducing you to things that you had never really understood before, or you had never really seen before. Mm -hmm. But because there was already that, there was already that trust established. There's already that foundation of trust. You're like, okay, you know, even though I don't understand this or I don't see this, mm -hmm. I can recognize that maybe you're seeing something that I can't see, and I can trust that. 
Absolutely. And yes, that, yes. Yeah. And I think there, there are definitely, you know, sometimes that is what submission looks like. Sometimes submission looks like, you know what, God has shown him something clearly. I may not understand it. I may not see it. And, um, but I'm going to respect it. And exactly. I mean, you know, and it's like, unless the person, which is, you know, Julie happens like, unless the person is like, it's like blatantly obvious. We're just like, oh no, well that's sin, which it's not going to happen if, if you're with a man of God. Then it's like, there's not really any issue for every single decision to have to be, you know, we're going to battle it out or I don't want to submit because I don't see if I don't see that. Like you're not always going to understand everything as a woman. That's the thing I think is, is kind of crazy about this whole idea. It's like, there's not always going to be time when you even fully understand the vision that God is giving you, even for the family, the burden that or, that God has given the husband. Like there's not always going to be times for that. And I think kind of navigating, at least for me, I'm even learning now, like how to navigate. Okay. Here's a time where I can share, Hey, this is what I'm seeing or have, have you considered this? Have you thought about that? And still at the end of the day, letting him lead. Mm -hmm. I think that in and of itself is, is a, you know, is a work in progress. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah I know really, really good. Stuff. Okay. Let me again, shout out to Mr. Research TV for the two on the super chat. that says other 22 year old don't like male wisdom. Why did you? Good question. Um, yeah. Great question. Um, yeah. Honestly, I don't really know. I was I'm, I'm from a small town down south. So um, there were masculine men in, you know, in my community. I've seen it. I just didn't see it in my own home. Um, and I was just talking to my husband the other day and I was thinking about my grandfather. And that was the most influence of a male leadership that I had in my oh, life. And he reminds me of my grandfather and my mm -hmm. grandfather was very wise. He would sit down with his music and just talk to us and give us game and just let us, you know, just, just tell us or, or holler at us, whatever it is that he was doing. But um, he, my husband just reminded me of him and I didn't even realize that till recently, but um, oh, okay. also, yeah. And then also I didn't think I, I don't, because I didn't have my father around, I for some I desired it very much so. I wanted to be led. I didn't want to, I was a single mom and it was hard and I worked double time and I was always stressed out and I was always tired and it was just like this isn't the life that I wanted. I want I want to have a teammate, someone that that would take the load off of me. So it I embraced it. America, Jonasy. No, I I did have a grandfather. I was just saying that my he um reminded me of my grandfather. Um Amari said it's like a great lead leader in war. Troops will follow him into the gates of hell. Women that are protected will or should do the same for their men. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I, I would, you know, whatever. I mean, we've moved. Um, we moved all the way from the East Coast to, to Arizona. I have no idea what what it was going to be like, but I knew that my husband was leading me and that's my home. That's where my protection is. And wherever he is, I'm good. Um, Mr. Re, uh, Research TV said he invested in you as a single mom. Describe why you were grateful. Oh, I actually just did a video with um, Allie, uh, the real Fem Sapien, and we talked about being a single mother and um, why it's important to be grateful. It would. Be, and the biggest reason is because he is sacrificing. He's he's investing, like you said, and he is sacrificing um, to take on me and children that aren't his. So 
um, that alone definitely put me in a position to understand that, you know, I, I don't, I'm not the one with the leverage here. I have to win him. <laughs> so I, that, I guess that was a big proponent of why, um, I, I was able to consider submission and just being led by him because, you know, I understood that as a single mother, I'm not marriage material for most men. So I had to make up for the baggage that I carried. And today in this modern time, being submissive is so taboo that if you're an agreeable, beautiful, submissive woman, you're going to compete and do very well against a lot of these modern women because they're none of that. So that definitely gave me a leg up in the game. <laughs> K Toad said, that's definitely a sacrifice. I agree. Absolutely. <laughs> Cedric said, looks like I need a woman with some kids. No, you need an agreeable woman with some kids, a teachable woman with some kids. <laughs> What I said just made sense. Don't burn your house down trying to be the man just because your wife may have more knowledge than you on a particular subject. Just made sense. Don't burn your house down trying to be the man. I guess. But still, as, as wives, we should yield even if our idea is better. And let him learn from his own mistakes. That's how, you know, I believe that's how you really bring out the best in a man is to let him fail. Don't save the day all the time. That's true. Now, I don't I, I missed everything, obviously. <laughs> like I said, I'm going to be shopping for internets over the next week. <laughs> oh, my God. This is this is like literally the worst of the I've been this doing doing this a little bit over a year. This is like probably by far the worst connection I've ever had. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're in a lie. So I appreciate all of you guys for bearing with me because the struggle is on like extra today. Between like I got my hotspot here and my internet, and both is just like it and out. So, um, but I think what you said was super bars about a lot letting your husband kind of come to his own decision, and sometimes he has to bump his head on his own. And make his own mistakes like there are i think there are times when you can and to your point he will listen to you especially if he feels respected he will consider take into consideration what you're saying and he may actually take in that wisdom but there's other times just like nah he has to figure that on himself and if you try to push it it can just make it even worse so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i've had times where my husband asked me my opinion on something and i'm just like i really don't feel comfortable helping you with this decision i do not want that pressure <laughs> He just laughed, like, all right, whatever, I handle it. <laughs> because when things go wrong, I don't want you looking at me. You told me. <laughs> um, I was saying that uh, there's been times where my husband may ask me something and I'm just like, I don't feel comfortable even giving you my opinion because um, that's just too much pressure. Because if it goes wrong, <laughs> I don't need you looking at me. You handle that. <laughs> But yeah, right. there are definitely times where your input and wisdom is needed as a woman because we we see things differently. We do, and like I said, what, what women do have a special wisdom about them. Even mm -hmm. if you look at wisdom in the Bible and how she, it's also oftentimes personified as a woman, so women do have a special, unique aspect about them as far as wisdom is concerned. I just think the problem is right now, so many of us, so many of us have been led astray, and so many of us have been believing and leaving you know lives or just a lot of us are broken to where that wisdom is not i feel like it's not always on full display mm -hmm. a lot of men who have kind of like a nasty taste in their mouth from some of the bad relationships that they've had and vice versa so um but to your point when we are really operating in our god-given role and we're just being who god created us to be like there is great wisdom that woman can offer you know mm -hmm. the situation mm -hmm. Yeah, we're more, we're more um, we have intuition. We're more in tune with our emotions and other people's emotions around us. So yeah, it could be yeah. helpful. Absolutely. 
Okay, so we're we're getting down there again. I thank you for bearing with me on this struggle stream. I really do. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> again, guys, be sure to check out um, Family Values TV. She has some great content. Um, I know you're going to be, I mean, I know you're pregnant, you said, so I'm sure your hands are full, but <laughs> in between child and, and baby raising and everything, um, you know, she's dropping some good wisdom and some good perspective on her channel. So show her some love there for sure. So how um, how can a woman recognize whether or not a man can be a good dad? Hmm. <laughs> um, I guess more so how he is around other children and what his goals are. When he speaks about his future, um, does he is he talking about what he's leaving behind? Is he talking about you know, what he can do to better the community for, even if it's not his kids, but just for the future in general. I think that definitely are good aspects of a father. Um, hmm. Because I, I was like, I was very pleasantly surprised with my husband for him to not have children. He was very well with mine. And then now, like, the, the kids that we have together is just wonderful to see. I, I say it's healing for me and my fatherlessness to just to see my daughters get to have that, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. And, um, but how could I? How can you spot that? I guess more so the way that he treats you, because like I I say, my husband fathered me, he taught me, and he really gave it to me real, and really um, you know, put me up on game, and really gave me wisdom, and that alone I seen as a a fatherly figure. So I knew that if he would do that for me, he would absolutely do that for his 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 seeds, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that makes sense. That makes mm -hmm. sense. I mean, they say the way you, the way a person treat, treats you, the way a person treats even their, their mother, their father has, it speaks volumes about who they are and how you can expect them to treat your children, how you can expect them to treat um, even you, in the, you know, in their relationship long term. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, again, coming from your background, as you mentioned that your father wasn't there, you're living proof that even if a woman didn't necessarily grow up seeing the example or being prepared in such a way on how to be a mm -hmm. wife, it's not to say that you can't still learn and you can't still grow, especially if you come in with the right heart and you're teachable um, and you're, you know, you're partnering with somebody who is worth partnering with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So shout out to a black chad with the 4.99 i appreciate you also i did i just saw this cash app come through shout out to hakeem for the 10 on the cash app you're always showing support um thank you for being such a loyal loyal supporter um so we're we're getting we're wrapping things up soon because i know you have a, a family to take care of <laughs> okay yeah. family to take care of um mm -hmm. so now, I want to ask you this, because I know you you work closely with uh, things related to this. So this whole, um, you know, Roe versus Wade and this whole abortion thing has come up a lot lately. And um, something that I've heard as far as pushback is, you know, in the situation where maybe even a man and a wife is together, but they choose for whatever reason not to have kids. Mm -hmm. And let's say they get pregnant unexpectedly, even though they've already chosen not to. Do you think they should have the right to consider abortion or do you think that there are better alternatives out there for women and men um, to consider for abortion? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't believe any person has the right to kill an innocent person for any reason. That's my stance on that. But there are absolutely there are other options out there. Um, there's pregnancy centers that you can go to. And I actually, if you look up optionline.org and you type in your, um, your area, like your area code or something like that, mm -hmm. it will pop up all of the pregnancy centers around you. And you could, you know, it will tell you, tell you their hours, um, where they're located and the resources that they have. 
And a lot of these places have um, resources as far as uh, adoption. And a lot there's a misconception about adoption in that it's hard, it costs too much, and that there's nobody adopting. That is a lie. There's many people who are dying to have a baby because they can't have their own. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you will be really helping a family and you're a hero if you were to give your baby to a family. And a lot of women have the issue um, with adoption as well, because they're like, oh, then I will have to think about that child. That child will be in this world and then I won't know anything. And mm -hmm. that's, that's not necessarily the truth. There are three types of adoption. There's open adoption, closed adoption and partial adoption. And um, I volunteer at a pregnancy center right now. And the adoption adoption agency that I work that we worked with have, I think about 32 to 33 parents waiting on a baby. Doesn't matter if that baby is, you know, hooked on drugs or deformed or whatever, they'll take a baby. It doesn't matter how healthy the baby is. The baby is alive. They want it. <laughs> okay. And they are very open with um, open adoption, which is where you could you as the um, biological mother can write out a plan and, and um, get visitation and get pictures and go have dinner with the family and be a part of the family. It's even the way that they describe it is that these parents are. Um, prepared to for you to be a part of their family as well so you okay. even though if you're not financially there they couldn't take they'll have the rights over um your biological child but you won't have to miss everything and when women start to hear this that oh they, there's options like this and she gets to control she gets the right how she wants this plan and how many times she wants to see that child a year or whatever and once women hear this, they're like, OK, well, I don't necessarily need abortion then. I can do that because they, we're not educating on this option and the, the greatness of it and how you can be, you know, you can be you can still be a part of that child's life. And um, there's a lot of misconceptions about these pregnancy centers, like one of them is that and I seen literally on I think it was CNN or MSNBC where they were saying that pregnancy centers just trick women into having babies and force them to have babies and it's like how can we do that unless we locking them up in a basement somewhere there's no way that we're forcing them to do anything they come in we are non we're not judgmental if they have if they are wanting to seek for an abortion no we don't give them a referral to go get an abortion but what we do what we would do is give her education let her know what will happen and also um give her a, a free std testing because when you when you get these abortions they don't give you std testing which is very dangerous because you you ultimately have to open your cervix and if you have an infection that will go up into your cervix and you can really get sick so um we do that we give you an ultrasound so you can see how far along you are and you know and let you decide it's not that we're forcing you anything we're educating you we're doing what planned parenthood is not doing they're not going to educate you and they're not going to tell you exactly what's really happening because they don't want to deter you or change your, or you know uh frighten you from that money that you're about to pay them so um you know, there's a lot of misconceptions about pregnancy centers, and I'm really getting tired of it because we, we're just there to help. We're just there to support women, especially after Roe v. Wade getting overturned. It's our job for the people who advocated for Roe v. Wade to be overturned, for the people who advocate for the unborn. It's our job now to step up and be um, be a bridge for the ladies now that are in crisis when women are getting pregnant and they don't want to have the baby, it, it's a crisis to them. It's the worst thing in the world for them. And we just have to be understanding of that and be there for them to, you know, hold their hand and relieve some of that stress and help them take the next steps forward. So, yeah, I hope um, Chess comes back. Also, while I'm here, um, 
there is if you if you are considering an abortion or you may consider one um you know that there's the surgical one and then there's the pill where we can take i hear that they're trying to mail those um pill abortions now too so if you are considering or you would do that you should you should write this number down 877-558 zero three 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 and i'll say it again after i explain what it's about it's abortion pill reversal because you get two you get two pills they first give you the um i forgot the name of it and i'm not even gonna try to uh, say it but they give you one pill and um that is supposed to um it's supposed to uh remove the hormones that is keeping the baby alive and um and then after 24 to 36 hours, you take the second pill. But if you have not taken that second pill yet and you've changed your mind and you're having second thoughts and you're like, oh, I, I think I can do this or I could just do adoption. I don't think I want to, you know, kill my baby. There yeah, um, is a abortion pill reverse reversal option. You call this number, you take um, you call this number, let them know where you're located, let them know that you you've changed your mind. And they will send the pill to the, your nearest um, pharmacy. You can go in there and take it. It's not always successful, but it, I've heard successful stories. And you just go into a, the, a pregnancy center near you and get a free ultrasound to make sure the baby is okay. And, um, yeah, so let me give you the number again. It's in, And if you are advocates, you guys should keep this in your context as well. If you ever run into a, a woman who took the pill and wants to um, change her mind, it is 877-558-0333. That's 877-558-0333. And you can look online, um, abortionpillreversal.com. Hold on, I think she, uh, Chez just messaged me. Hello. You okay? <laughs> well, husband's in the back, like, what's going on? Like, oh God. No, this is like I so said, this is legitimately been like the worst dream ever. It's like weird. It's like weird and horrible. Hmm. So, sorry. I'm interesting. The rest of it. But I thank you. I mean, luckily, I mean, I'm sure you are dropping gems when I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate you for bearing with me. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, at this point, I mean, like I said, with this thing cutting out, I don't want to have to put you through any more, <laughs> more uh, stress than you've already been. Um, I appreciate you being here. I mean, you've shared so much information. I wish I could have you on for like hours more, but I know you have a great day raise. So um, I guess my last question is, I don't know if there's anything else you want to like leave with the audience or maybe any other information you would like to share with people before we wrap this up. Um, uh, no, I actually just shared the information that I wanted to, but I, there is okay, something good. that I wanted to speak on before we yeah. go. One little yeah. thing, one little nugget. Um, and it was brought up recently on a show that I just did. And I'm not going to call her out or anything because, you know, people are sensitive when it comes to their children and how they raise them. Yeah. But it reminded me of something that I've seen um, in our communities where our mothers are em emasculating our sons. And I just wanted to mm -hmm. say that we we have we have to stop doing that. Our um, our boys are little men. And there will be men one day and we should treat them, of course, not as a man, but as such, we should definitely prepare them to be men and um, no, stop, let's stop emasculating them and embarrassing them in front of their friends and embarrassing them in front of family even or speaking to them in a demeaning way. Um, I think little boys need to understand that they're valued. 
and that they're that they're needed. So when they become men, they understand their value and they understand and 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 demand the respect that they 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 that they deserve because a lot of times these um little boys that are emasculated by their mothers they have issues with women is either they there's an anger there and they will snap at a drop of a dime when a woman isn't um when when they when they feel like they do when they're when they mother when their mothers did it to them so or they become very eff effeminate and they just, you know, very docile. And most feminine women don't want a docile man. So let's, let's treat our boys with respect and start them young so they can be good, productive men and leaders. But... I be I, I I'm running my mouth too much. I should have just <laughs> let her close us out. Is she gonna come back? Okay, so since we were about to close out anyways, thank you all for joining us. I really appreciate it. I enjoy the talk and hopefully me and Chez can hook up again and we can, um, she can get some, some better internet <laughs> and we can do this again. I really appreciate you guys. Um, my channel name is Family Values and you can search it by um, putting in youtube.com slash Family Values TV and um subscribe and check me out there so thank you thank you so much i really enjoyed my time um god bless you all and i hope i was able to enlighten you in some way shape or fashion god bless okay so <laughs> Anyways, um, y'all, thank you for bearing with me. This has by far been the most struggle stream I've ever done. I want to give a special shout out to Family Values TV who was holding it down even when I was in and out. Also, if you guys have any recommendations for better internet than what I have right now, let me know. Uh, like I said, I've, I was doing Comcast and the struggle was real. I've been trying T-Mobile the last month. You guys already see the struggle is extra real. So I'm shopping for a better internet so you guys let me know suggestions i'm open to it because i want to make sure i'm giving you guys a good experience and i'm so sorry that this happened i don't know why it was like so extra crazy today but anyways i appreciate your guys support um i really do thank you for bearing with me through the ins and the outs i hope you guys are able to get something out of this um again my goal is to continue to have more shows like this and to uh, provide a space where you know um women in particular can have an alternative option to the major narrative that is happening today, a narrative that I think is really making a lot of women unhappy, in my humble opinion. So if nothing else, I know not everybody's going to agree with this, but for those who are interested, do want to know what does it mean to be a wife, do want to have the qualities, the tools, at the very least the conversations, to know that there's another option out there, it should exist. So um, Thank you all of you guys for rocking with me, for being with me. Yeah, I see Comcast. I did com like Comcast was giving me a problem. I was having some major issues with Comcast. That's why I left. Um, yeah, I see location. I wonder about that because I do have a lot of trees where I'm at. So I'm like, is it like just the location of my area? I don't know because it's been a struggle over here. But we're going to work it out eventually. Um, we are going to work it out eventually. But yeah, you guys, that's what this is about. So thank you for bearing with me. Um, stay tuned for upcoming content. 
related to this subject. Like I said, my plan is to have this run for a couple of weeks. Um, and I think if we get enough interest, get enough feedback, then maybe we can continue it for longer and, and build it up into something even greater. So thank you guys. Also shout out to Malarkey. Want to make sure I acknowledge the 10 on the uh, super chat. I see, hey, viewers, like, share, and donate to your favorite content creators. I can, you can too. Much appreciated. I think, especially all you guys, channel members, and for those of you who are just consistently stopping by, showing support, consistently, you know, uh, giving me encouragement and love. I really, really do appreciate you guys. Like, this is a group effort, and you guys make it worth it. So, thanks. And um, I think if not, if I don't have anything else, I'm gonna wrap it up. And uh, yeah, <laughs> struggle streaming. No, this is this is like. This takes struggle stream to a whole new level. Today takes struggle stream to a whole new level. I see I got at and I might have to see because I've heard I've heard y'all that like certain areas, certain networks do better. So I don't know. Maybe I'll just ask my husband to see what he thinks about that. Because all I know is that what we're doing currently is not working. <laughs> so yeah, check out Family Values TV. Also, yeah, you guys, you can join channel membership. I haven't been, I haven't been talking about that enough, but um, be sure to join me on channel membership. We have fun over there. We kind of have side of our conversations, behind the scenes stuff, members only lives, all that different stuff. So become a channel member. You can do so for as little as four ninety nine. Also, some of you guys who are like history nerds or statistical, you know, you're all that kind of different stuff. I share a lot of the information on my members only. I have a, a, a drive where all my stats, all of my resources go for any of you guys who want to geek out on information. So again, um, join me there for as little as $4.99 a month. And yeah, guys, this has been good. This has been fun. And we'll talk later. Okay, bye.